It's a nightmare for me, for everybody. I don't know uh, what the future is going to be, yes. It's not just the poor or the rich, everyone's affected. For fuel, we wait in line for 8, 20, 40 hours just to get some fuel. For gas, people wait in line even further. For medicine, if I get bitten by a dog with rabies, I will die. That's how far we've come as a country. What happens to the price of food in a bankrupt country? Sweet potato, a kilo would have been about 40, 50 rupees. Now it's 250 grams is 40. Yeah, so, so again, it's quadrupled in price. And that's a local course. staple. So yeah, Definitely. The local currency has almost halved in value against the dollar in recent months, and inflation is running at 30%, the highest rate in Asia. That hurts people like Upeksha and Jihan, who run a Colombo photography studio. Things like cabbage, cauliflower, carrots, these are like all luxury stuff now. What, carrots are luxuries? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very soon we'll be, every majority of people will be starving. I mean, uh, that would be If it carries now. on like this? I mean, if it carries on like this, it'll happen. This food market in Colombo feels like ground zero in the global cost of living crisis. But why should you care about what happens in Sri Lanka? Well, one reason is what it might pretend for many other countries as well. Not so long ago, spiking food and fuel prices of the sort we're seeing here sparked waves of revolution, war and migration that have destabilised the world and deeply affected us all. And some think what's happening in Sri Lanka might be an early warning of history repeating. But the company is like... But how did it come to this? Sri Lanka's newly installed central bank governor, who will play a key role in the upcoming IMF bailout negotiations for Sri Lanka, told Newsnight politicians had made blunders in recent years, not least massive tax cuts introduced by President Gotabaya Rajapaksa in 2019. The government has been running large fiscal deficits almost around 11% of GDP for the last two years. That is very excessive. We could have taken this decision that we have taken much earlier than now. Mm. If we had taken those decisions, for example, go to the IMF earlier, we start the debt recycling process one year before, we, would, we could have managed the situation without this kind of suffering in this country. Right. That, that's my view. So if your predecessors had made different decisions, the situation could have been more manageable today? That's my view, yes. Very nice to meet you. The leader of the opposition says the problem wasn't just incompetence but also corruption. We have a country that is bankrupt. We have a country that cannot feed its people. We have a country in darkness. You would accuse the present president and the former prime minister of economic governance failures and failures of policy. Would you also accuse them of corruption? Of course. Personal corruption? Of course, because basically this country has been run on a process of promoting family interests, family bandism. Everything relates back to the family. It's family-dominated politics. There have been protests here calling for President Rajapaksa to resign for 77 straight days. Fuel, we wait in line for 8, 20, 40 hours just to get some fuel. For gas, people wait in line even further. For medicine, if I get bitten by a dog with rabies, I will die. That's how far we've come as a country because we don't have the injections for it. That's how much we are affected. We are a country with so much, so many resources, but the mismanagement and the sort of uh, corruption that was there stole them all away from us. Sri Lanka is certainly a cautionary tale of extreme domestic economic mismanagement, but it's also been engulfed by global economic forces. 
First, the pandemic, which destroyed tourist revenues. Then, the Russian invasion of Ukraine, which has sent food and fuel prices soaring. And it's far from alone among developing countries in being engulfed in this way. Some are comparing Sri Lanka to the canary in the coal mine. In other words, a warning of a bigger disaster to come. The World Bank has warned that as many as a dozen developing economies could follow Sri Lanka into default in the coming months, from the Maldives to Ethiopia to Senegal and Pakistan. The United Nations agrees. It's like a domino effect. It starts in Sri Lanka, but unfortunately we will know, and we know that it's going to be replicated in so many other countries. If the, the international community intervene at the right time, we will uh, learn lessons. They can learn uh, very quickly uh, the lessons to, uh, to, uh, to apply to other uh, countries and uh, to reduce really the drastic impact that will happen on the population. Petrol queues around Colombo are already two to three kilometers long. The final emergency diesel shipment arrived from India today. It's unknown when the next will come. I joined the queue at 5 o'clock, and right. so now it's uh, ni past 9.15 now. Did you ever imagine you'd have to queue four hours for petrol? Not at all. I've actually got my mum to come and wait with my kids. Uh, I told her it'll be about two hours or two and a half uh, max, and then I'll go and drop her home. So, yeah. <laughs> How does it make you feel? Uh, quite frustrating because this is uh, now, this is what it's like day to day. And many argue the worst of this crisis for Sri Lanka lies ahead. This is a nation running on fumes. And many others are perhaps not so far behind. <laughs> 